All right, I'm going to give you an example of the worked data um, for the 3.1 internal. So in this example, we've got pendulum data, we've got the length in meters, and we've got three times for periods that the class collected. And so we want to work out um, an average value of T period. And so that is just the, the average. I don't think I need to give you too much help with that, of these three values. And then I'll copy that down into the other cells. Now, along with that, I'm going to need an uncertainty, an absolute uncertainty for the time values. And so for that, and because there's a range of values, I need half of the range. So this will be my absolute uncertainty for period. And I should probably, while I'm doing it, just put in my units at the top of each column. That's something I'd expect you to do in your internal. And so for the absolute uncertainty, I said it was half of the range. Um, so that's equal to the maximum value from these three minus the minimum value, again, from these three, and divided by 2. And so we can see that's 2.92 the highest, 2.8 is the lowest, so the range is uh, 0.12, and that divided by 2 is 0 0.06. That means that this measurement would be 2.85 seconds plus or minus 0 0.06 seconds. Now, because I'm not going to change the, um, I'm not going to transform the period, because I'll be plotting uh, my period was the is the dependent variable, so that's going to go on my y-axis. Um, L is on my is my independent variable, that's on my x-axis. I'm going to transform my L values, <clears throat> so I don't need to do anything more with my average period or absolute uncertainty for that for those periods. So if in my next column I show the transformation I'm going to do for length, at this stage I would have plotted a graph of um, average period versus length and that would have given me a shape of graph which suggests that I need the square root of L so it would tell me that the relationship between the two variables was T is proportional to the square root of L and so I'm going to find the square root of L and my units are now square root of meters and that is equal to square root of this number over here and then I can fill those down. OK, and I've got um, the same number of significant figures in my square root of L as I do in my L value. That's that's exactly where I want. Um, now I need uh, a few more things here. I'm going to insert a column next to length <coughs> because I want an absolute uncertainty in meters for length and because my measurements are all to one decimal place then that suggests that whatever measuring device has been used can only measure to the nearest 10 centimeters the nearest point one of a meter and so all of my uncertainties my absolute uncertainty here will be 0 0.1 so this measurement is 2.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 meters 1.5 plus or minus 0 0.1 meters. Now that absolute uncertainty is important because in order to plot error bars on our linear graph, we need to take this absolute uncertainty, we need to convert it into a percentage of the L, and then we can transform that. We can transform a percentage uncertainty when we square root the L. Um, and that gives us a percentage uncertainty for the square root L. We can then convert that percentage uncertainty back into an absolute uncertainty and plot it on our linear graph. So I'll insert another column here. And I will uh, enter here my percentage uncertainties. This is 
um, percentage uncertainty in L. And because it's a percentage, I don't need units. And so that is just my value here, my uncertainty, my absolute uncertainty divided by my measurement. And we would times that by 100 to turn it into a percentage. Now, there's no hard and fast rule about how many significant figures you should use for percentage uncertainty. So I'm just going to call these um, two significant figures each. Now, once I've square rooted L, um, because I've done a square root of these values, I'm going to half the uncertainty in L because the square root is the same as saying something's to the power of a half. And so what we do is we half the percentage uncertainty. If we were doing a squared relationship, um, because that's to the power of two, then we would double or multiply by two all of the the percentage uncertainties. So my percentage uncertainty in the square root of L, my percentage uncertainty in the square root of L will be half of the percentage uncertainty in L. And then that will allow me to calculate an absolute uncertainty by working out um, the percentage of, say, 1.4. So I'll go through that. So my percentage uncertainty equals this value divided by 2. And for the sake of consistency, um, let's go to two significant figures for my percentages. It doesn't really matter whether I use two or three significant figures for percentage uncertainties. <clears throat> and I'm going to make the screen a little bit smaller. And now I want an absolute uncertainty in the square root of L. And that would be in square root of meters. And so what I'm doing here is I'm finding uh, what 2.5% of 1.4 is, and that gives me an absolute uncertainty that will accompany my square root L measurement. So in this case, um, I would do equals this value times my percentage, do that over 100, so I'm effectively working out 2.5% of 1.4. Um, looks like I'm going to need to increase the number of decimal places there. <clears throat> and then I'll fill that down. Now, I'm in a bit of a conundrum here because the last thing I want to do is make sure that all of my um, all of my measurements that I'm going to plot on my linear graph match the level of significance of my absolute uncertainty. So what I mean by that is the number of decimal places shown here in my square root L value must match the number of decimal places in my absolute uncertainty in square root L. Now, if I try and reduce that, I get an absolute uncertainty of zero. Um, and while that's quite correct in terms of rounding, I would suggest that actually, if I round it down and pretend there's no uncertainty, then that's not genuine. And so what I would do in this case is I would round this up to 0.1, because then I'm still, all of my values that have led to that would still lie within the same range. Whereas if I say it's zero, then... I'm effectively ignoring the uncertainty. So I'm going to change that to 0 0.1. And then I'm, I'm going to have to do that for the rest of the values as well. And so they're all going to round up to 0 0.1. Now that's not always the case. So don't think you can just do it for everything. You've got to consider each one. And because it, each one of those um, would round up or could be rounded up to 0 0.1, then it's worked out that way. And so now the values that I'm interested in for my x-axis of my linear graph is the square root of L 
and my average period on the y-axis and then each point that I plot will have a horizontal error bar with a 0 0.1 units or the square root of meters to either side of this point here so I'd have 1.4 and my error bar extending from 1.3 through 1.5. My error bar for 1.2 would extend from 1.1 to 1.3. My error bar for 1.0 would extend from 0 0.9 to 1.1, so on and so forth. So the as a double check, the values here match the level of significance of my absolute uncertainty in the square root of L. I'm happy with that. And if I come back here, I notice that my absolute uncertainty in period is, has not been rounded to one significant figure. So your uncertainties must always match the level of significance of the, of the measurement, and they cannot be more than one significant figure. So I need to drop these down, some of these, to make sure that what they are one significant figure, and that they match the level of significance in the average period. So I can see that those now match. So when I'm plotting um, my average period on the y-axis, the value will be 2.85 for one of them, and the error bar would extend from 2.79 to 2.91. For the next point, 2.44, my error bar, the vertical error bar, would extend from 2.36 to 2.52. Alright, I hope that helps. Good luck with your internal.